In this visit, I'll go through the Framingham Risk Score for Women. Heart Attack Risk Assessment 2 for men is the same visit, but for men, because the point value charts are different for men and women. Now, if you're having any symptoms like chest pain, indigestion, heartburn, fatigue, swelling of the ankles and feet, shortness of breath, or any other symptom, you need to see the doctor right away. If you're having symptoms, you could be at high risk even if you answer no to the 10 questions and even if your Framingham risk score is low. Seeing the doctor can prevent a heart attack. If you answered no to the 10 questions in the heart attack risk assessment one visit and you're not having any symptoms, then determining your Framingham risk score is the next step in determining your risk. You need to know your total cholesterol level and your HDL cholesterol level. You need to have a blood pressure measurement and you'll need to answer some questions. If you don't yet have the blood test and the blood pressure measurements, remember that you can order the cholesterol test yourself online without a doctor's order. Just go to Google and type in blood tests and you'll find companies that can do this for you you'll want to order a lipid panel. And you can get your blood pressure measurements at lots of drugstores or supermarkets. Even if you haven't gotten your test yet, you could still go through this visit to see how it's done. First, get a pen and a blank piece of paper and put numbers down the left side from one to six. I'll ask you to answer six questions. How old are you? your total cholesterol level, your HDL cholesterol level, your systolic blood pressure. That's the top number, the bigger number of your two blood pressure numbers. Are you taking medicine for high blood pressure? And do you smoke? We'll assign points to each answer and add up all the points. Then we'll calculate the risk from the total points. We'll do an example first and then we'll go through your answers together and figure your risk. First the example. The woman is 51 years old and she feels healthy. Her total cholesterol is 290. Her HDL cholesterol is 33. Her blood pressure is 142 over 86. So her Systolic blood pressure is 142. Systolic blood pressure is the first of the two blood pressure numbers. She is being treated for uh, high blood pressure and she smokes cigarettes. Now let's go through her questions and give her points. Question 1, age 51 years. We look at the age chart and it shows that she gets six points for her age. So write down the number after her age. That's the points for this question. Question two, total cholesterol. Hers is 290 and her age is 51. We go across the cholesterol row to her age column and we see that she gets seven points. Question three, her HDL cholesterol. Hers is 33, so we look at the HDL cholesterol chart and she gets two points. Questions four and five. Her blood pressure is 142 over 86 and she is being treated uh, for high blood pressure, so she gets five points. And finally, question six. She smokes and is 51 years old, so she gets four points. So her total points are added together and they come out to 24. Now we look at the total point chart to determine the patient's risk. We see that she has 24 points and her risk uh, then of having a heart attack or dying from a heart attack over the next 10 years is 27%. This means she is at high risk despite feeling fine and having no symptoms. But with medicines and healthy living habits, she can cut her risk by 50% or more. 
Now it's time to calculate your Framingham risk score. Get a paper and pen and write down the numbers 1 through 6 down the left margin of the paper. Get your cholesterol results and blood pressure results. You'll write down your answers next to the question numbers and then we'll go through your answers and look at the point chart for each question. You'll write down the points next to the answer to each question, then we'll add up all the points and then go to the risk chart to calculate your risk. 1. How old are you? Write down your age next to number 1. 2. What is your total cholesterol level? 3. What's your HDL cholesterol level? 4. What is your systolic blood pressure? And remember, that's the first number of the two blood pressure numbers. Write it down next to number 4. 5. Are you being treated for high blood pressure? Yes or no? And finally, 6. Do you smoke? Yes or no? Now, we'll go through and figure the points for each question. First question chart. Find the row with your age and then write down the points number that goes with your age next to your question 1 answer. The chart for question 2 is a little more complicated, but we can still do it together. First, find the row that goes with your total cholesterol level and then go across that row until you come to the points for your age. Write that number down next to number 2's answer. The chart for question 3 is easier. Write down the points that go to your HDL cholesterol level next to 3's answer. This chart is for questions 4 and 5, and there's only one point value for the two questions. Question 4, your systolic blood pressure, the first of the two blood pressure numbers, and question 5, are you being treated for the high blood pressure? Go to the row for your blood pressure and then write down the points in that row depending on whether or not you're being treated for high blood pressure. Now, write that point value down next to question 4 and put a line through question 5 to remind you that it's already been counted. This is the chart for question 6. If you don't smoke, just put down 0 next to question 6's answer. If you do smoke, Put down the points for your age. Now we're going to add up the five point values that you've put down. Add them all up and double check your addition. Now it's time to go to the risk calculation chart. Note your points box. The percentage number that is next to it is your risk of having a heart attack or dying from a heart attack over the next 10 years. High is greater than 20 percent, intermediate is 10 to 20 percent, and low risk is less than 10 percent. If your Framingham risk score showed low risk and you answered no to all of the 10 high risk questions in the heart attack risk assessment one, you could still be at intermediate risk. In Heart Attack Risk Assessment 3, the last of the series, I'll go over the last part of the risk assessment. Then we can go to prevention. If you'd like to print out the charts yourself, here's the link. Thanks for watching. I, I hope you found this helpful.